ะจ u s t to get some uh, business out of the way, uh, satellite coordinates for anybody that needs them for today's press conferences. Uh, it is Galaxy 17, Transponder 10, Slot B. Your downlink is 11895.5 V, as in Victor. Please make sure your cell phones are silenced during this time as well, and there's no recording from your cell phones of the press conferences. Everything will be available on the NCA Digital Media Hub. If you have any questions on that, let us know after the press conferences. Villanova will be going first. Also, if you're on Zoom, uh, please make sure that you use the raise hand function if you have a question, and we'll do our best to get to you.
you go, Mino, here. All right, just a reminder, please state your name and affiliation before your question. Raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Uh, we're going to start here with head coach Jay Wright, Jermaine Samuels, Justin Moore, and Caleb Daniels of Villanova. So we'll get right started with questions. If you're on Zoom, please use the raise hand function and we will get to you if we are able to. So first question right here in the front. Mike Sielski from the Philadelphia Inquirer for Jermaine. Um, what was your approach coming into the game to try to deal with Dickinson? You, you ended up on him quite a bit defensively. Um, what did you want to do and how do you feel like it played out? Um, I just wanted to, you know, to stay mobile and, you know, move. I understand that my teammates are right behind me. They're going to make plays for me. And that gave me all the confidence in the world. Uh, you know, he's, gonna, he's a phenomenal player. So he's going to get um, great, great uh, looks at the basket. But knowing that I have teammates behind me, um, that gave me all the confidence I needed. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Colin Beasley from the Villanova. And Jermaine, what did Jay tell you when he took you out of the game at the very end? Uh, that I was uh, very tough and that we got to keep it going. Um, that's as simple as it was. Down here in the front. Jay, what did you tell Jermaine when you took him out of the game? <laughs> Basically the same thing. Just that I, I was proud of his toughness, and we got we got more work to do. Down here in the front. Mike Jensen, Philadelphia Inquirer. Caleb, what got you going in the second half? Um, just knowing that my brothers are going to find me uh, on the perimeter, and just constantly being on attack for 40 minutes. Um, that pretty much started defensively. Uh, we stepping up for each other. And um, just constantly always being on the move and being on a step up for each other. So that's what pretty much got me going second half and knowing that they have confidence in me to make plays like that. In the back, please. Roll Flores, AP Radio. Uh, to any one of the three of uh, the players, what did you all do differently defensively? The score might not necessarily indicate that, but it just seemed like you all put a little bit more pressure defensively. Just, just to speak on that. Um, yeah, I think we just tried to pressure the ball a little bit more and not let it get into the paint for post-ups as easy. And uh, just being tough and physical in the scoring area. Um, we know they like to drive and get in the paint, uh, pressuring them and making them take tough shots. You're in the front. Jay, what did you think of Jermaine's overall performance tonight? It was, uh, it was awesome. I, I, was, I was really proud of his – his effort on the defensive end, we asked, we asked a lot of him, um, you know, on the defensive end guarding um, Tickinson a lot. But then on the offensive end, we were trying to move Tickinson around, which, you know, it sounds good unless you're the guy that's got to do it. If you're the guy that's got to do it, you're running, you're running around, setting screens, cutting to make him follow you. So we were really concerned. I mean, one time he – he never wants to come out. One time he said, I, just, I, 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 gotta, I gotta take a blow. Um, so it was a balance. You know, Eric did it for some part of the night, but mostly it was Jermaine. And, and that was a gutty effort, man. I, I know he's exhausted. Jermaine, how were you able to stay out of foul trouble despite being matched up with Dickinson almost all game? I'm um, just trying to be as solid as possible. Um, we work on habits every day in practice, you know, that, that give us the best chance to, you know, not get uh, fouls. And just also, you know, he's going to find the ball at some point. He's going to get the ball at some point. You just try to make it as difficult as possible. And then once he gets the ball, you just try to be as solid as possible, know that you have help behind you, and try to make him take a contested shot. Uh, Brennan Quinn from the – sorry, Brennan Quinn from the Athletic. Uh, Jay, kind of on that, you know – It'll be said Michigan missed a bunch of layups and missed bunnies, blah, blah, blah. But how much of it, in your opinion, was the fact that, you know, on initial contact, your guys weren't really backing down? You, they were kind of right in there. Yeah, I, I think that's important, Brendan. I think I've actually been pretty impressed with their answers. It was, they sound like coaches, which makes me feel good. I think Justin was making a good point. Uh, they're, they're a very well-coached team. They have great timing offensively. And Hunter Dixon is used to getting the ball at certain spots at specific times on his cut. And as Justin was saying, our ball pressure was taking that timing off a little bit. 
So when he was catching it, he was catching a little bit off his spot, and then we were trying to hold our ground and not let him back. As you, you saw a couple times, he backed us down, and it was automatic. We were trying to hold our ground. So instead of taking a, like a five-foot jump hook, it was, it was like an eight, ten-foot jump hook, you know. And, or like, like Jermaine was saying, sometimes he had to make a quick move. It was moving a little quicker than he normally did. That, that's what we were trying to do. He's still a hell of a player, and a, he's, he's a very difficult guy to, to scheme for because he kicked it out of there for threes. He offensive rebounded. He's tough. Here in the front. Andrew Kahn, Ann Arbor News. Jay, uh, all year Michigan kind of knew what it was going to get from Dickinson and Brooks. If you wouldn't mind sharing, was there a third guy for Michigan you were kind of particularly concerned about going off today? Uh, that, it, that was interesting. We thought there were a lot of guys capable. We definitely thought Houston. We were worried about Dickinson kicking it out to him for threes. Um, we thought that um, Jones, uh, who we knew because he played on Caleb's high school team, we thought Jones could get it going at any time. And um, it was, and, and we thought that Terrence Williams, like we knew him, we re recruited him. When he hit that one three, we, we, were, we all said to each other, okay, we got to get up on him. I feel like they have a lot of guys that can get it going. And, um, but we didn't, we, we concentrated on Brooks and, and Dickinson to start. And then we said, whichever one of these guys gets it going, we're going to adjust to. Coach, Steve Habel from Field Level Media, right over here. Um, last time y'all were in Texas, you know, a couple months back in Baylor, it was, it was pretty hard on y'all. Was that a turning point for your team? Dad and I lost to Creighton right after that. I mean, it seemed like y'all were just a completely different team tonight. You know, it, it, it wasn't a turning point. I think it was a, uh, it was the end of an incredible run where I was, I was really feeling like maybe our schedule was, I put our guys in a tough spot. Because that was the last of our preseason games was at Baylor. And then right after that, our first Big East game was at in Omaha at Creighton. A very good team, obviously, who, who we've all seen now. But people didn't think it then, right? So I was thinking to myself, and I said this to the guys, like, I might have put us in a bad spot. You know, I, I felt like we were worn down. And we were in finals. And Baylor played great, great. And that place was rocking, if you were there. <laughs> that place was incredible. So it was just... I don't feel like, you know, I said to him, like, we, we can't be down right now because we, I, I think I put you in a tough spot. And we battled. We never gave up in that Baylor game. And I think we learned some things from the Creighton game. And, and after that, I think we got it going. But I never think we, like, turn around. I never thought we got down, you know. We just knew we had a really tough preseason schedule. You're in the middle. Caleb, you had eight points, nine rebounds, and a, uh, a steal, a uh, block. Uh, even on a day when your shots weren't necessarily falling, how were you able to make an impact? Um, just finding other ways to impact the game by just defending. Um, that's what we pride our program on, just defending the rebound for 40 minutes. Uh, we don't care if our shots go in or if our offense is even flowing nice. We just care about getting stops. And that's one thing that I take pride in as well. So. I just wanted to come out the second half and just come out and get stops and just defend the rebound for 40 minutes. Jay, uh, Dan Walton from USA Today. Uh, Caleb went on his little run there right when Eli Brooks was starting to make some shots. When you're in these kinds of games, how important is it to get a couple, you know, baskets at the rim when, when frankly, you're just not getting a whole lot uh, throughout most of the game there? Yeah, that was, that was huge because I mean, we, you know, we have a, a saying, shoot them up, sleep in the st streets. We're, we're okay with, if we got open shots, we got open threes and we miss them, and we got to go home because we missed them. We're okay with that. But I thought that was a really critical point. As you said, Caleb had missed a couple good ones. And then the first one that started, he got a ball reversal and he caught to shoot it and they flew at him and he took it to the rim. And, and then he got another one after that. I think that got him going. And that was really important because we were getting shots. We just couldn't make them. And, um, and then he decided, you know, I'm going to use my shot to get to the rim. And that was, that was really, there were some really important buckets for us. All right, we're going to go to Zoom. We have a question, Ann. The next question comes from David with the Philly Sports Blitz. David, unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Jake, got a couple of questions for you. One, can you talk about the, the, the grind of going through the Big East and then getting ready for the NCAA tournament? Can you talk about how that prepared you guys for tonight? 
It always does, David, and especially the Big East tournament. I, we always talk about the fact you're playing Madison Square Garden. The environment is incredible. The teams are tough and physical like this team tonight, this Michigan team. I have to admit, though, we, we didn't run into anybody anywhere like Hunter Dickinson. Man, it, this dude is a handful. I mean, he just – He's got size, girth, strength, skill, intelligence, competitiveness. We've run into some good ones in the middle, but I think he's the best we've run into this year. And how can you guys build off tonight going into the Elite Eight on Saturday? We got to, I think we're beyond building, David. I think we got to go rest. We're beat up. Uh, we got to rest up. We, we can learn a little bit watching film. Uh, it's about surviving now. Like we got we to gotta rest up and learn a little bit by film. Um, and then and then come out and, and, and be intelligent against whoever we're playing against uh, because we, we know we got a great team, whoever it's going to be. Any other questions for our Villanova representatives? We have one more on Zoom from Christopher Heidel from Herb FM. Christopher, go ahead and ask your question. Hey, this is Chris Idell from Hermiton Radio in Baltimore. And congratulations on making it to Delete Eight. What, what do you guys? You, know, you talk about rest and all that stuff. What's the main goal for tomorrow to get you guys really focused on Saturday because it's going to be a tough game if whoever you play against, Arizona or Houston. Um, I think it's all about um, first, first and foremost, taking care of our bodies, hydrating, um, getting the proper sleep, and then just doing whatever we can to, to you know, keep our bodies in check. You know, stretching, um, ice cold tubs, whatever it takes to make sure that we're ready to play and ready to play at our full potential. All right, that's all the time we have for our Villanova student athletes and Coach Jay Wright. Congratulations, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, guys.
All right, we should be joined by Coach here in just a second. As a reminder, please provide your name and affiliation. Prior to any question, please raise your hand and we will get a mic to you as soon as possible. If you're on Zoom, please use the raise hand function and we will get to you as well. Um, we're joined by Michigan's Hunter Dickinson, Eli Brooks, and Devontae Jones. So we'll go ahead and get started with our um, student athlete question. So please let me know if you have a question. Chris Ballas, Wolverine.com, On3.com. Hunter, you guys seem to leave a lot of points at the rim tonight. Was there something they were doing, or was it just not falling for you guys? I think, yeah, I think it just wasn't our night out there. Here in the front. For, for Eli, um, when the shots aren't falling like that, close shots, deep shots, whatever, Hunter said it's just not your night. Does that make you think you were that close? They certainly looked like they were vulnerable at times. You had your chances in this game. Do you feel that way? Um, I mean, yeah. Um, we lost by however much, and we, lo we left a lot of points out, like um, you guys said. Here in the front. For, for any of you, Andrew Kahn, Ann Arbor News, for any of you, do, do you feel the offense ran the way you guys wanted it to as far as, you know, your pregame plan? I mean, we got good looks. We just didn't capitalize. So I think we got the looks that we wanted. Um, we just didn't make the shots. Uh, Coach Brian Gill, SB Nation. Coach, uh, Coach Wright said that one of the things they tried to do was disrupt your timing a little bit because it's so tough to stop Hunter once he gets the ball when he wants it. Did you feel like your timing was a little bit off based on what they did? We'll give uh, Bill Nova credit. You know, uh, very good team, well coached. Uh, played a very solid game, uh, extremely competitive on both sides of the floor. Um, we, we knew coming in that they were going to switch a lot, and uh, we prepared for it. Thought Hunter got the ball in uh, some good spots. Yes, you know some of the spots that he was pushed off the uh, block, but overall we got some good looks at the basket. Um, unfortunately, just to go our way. Can't hear you. Uh, no, there we go. Andrew Kahn in life. Uh, for the players, um, I know it's difficult immediately after, but if you wouldn't mind assessing the season, there were highs and lows, but you guys get to the Sweet 16 and, you know, put up a good fight here. Um, just staying, staying connected. Um, coach did the best in the locker room, um, battling adversity and staying together. Um, that's what brothers do, and that's, that's one of our core values of family. So I think we did a good job of – um, sticking true to what uh, Michigan basketball is all about this year um, and, and staying connected as one. Austin Meek with The Athletic. Juwan, same question for you. What do you think your lasting memories of this season will be? What are you going to take away from this season? Uh, great, great young men to be uh, a part of with their development. Uh, learned a lot from them as far as how competitive they are. They compete throughout the season from start to finish. Um, a great group to coach, uh, accepted learning, uh, stay connected by supporting each other. Some of their roles were different. No one wavered on the other end. Um, did an amazing job of buying into their roles. Um, I think with some of the injuries that we face, uh, with some of the COVID, you know, every guy you know, was able to go out there and compete and, and save our season. And, and so you learned a lot from, you know, who we are. Uh, we always talk about Michigan being you know, a family, and um, I've seen that we've been the most connected group uh, this year uh, because of the fact that, you know, everyone's have been supporting each other. Uh, when I walk away from this season and I look back, I'm like, no, no reason but to hold your head up high uh, on how uh, our team banded together, uh, competing uh, throughout a tough Big Ten season and then leading into the NCAA tournament. There were times when we were counted out, and there were times when people didn't feel that we deserved to be here, and these guys rose to the occasion and proved that they earned the right to be in the NCAA tournament. So uh, hats off to my players and staff. Brian Gillis, SB Nation. Coach, even when the shots weren't falling, you guys battled all night. You played tough defense. Is this one of the tougher, better defensive performance for you guys this year, do you think, especially considering the competition? We've been battling all season long. Um, but I would say this, this is why I'm so damn proud of our group. You know, you, 
everyone talks about the shooting uh, from Villanova, uh, whether it's the three-point shooting, the, 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 you know, the tax in the paint. Um, but you look at the numbers, and you know, thir- they shot 37% from the field. Uh, they shot 30% from three. Uh, that says a lot about how hard they played defensively by dialing into the scouting report and making their players have to work for every bucket. Um, I do not want that not to be mentioned and th- let them know that that's how the game goes sometimes. You know, it's a very competitive game. You have a lot of talented young men that's here on this stage. Uh, every team that's playing in the Sweet 16 is really, really good. <laughs> so are they. Nothing had to do with me. It's all about them. Here in the front. Bob, Bob Wodowski from the Detroit News. For Devontae and Hunter, because Eli already asked this question, may or may not be the end of the road for you guys at Michigan, certainly this season. Can you sum up your feelings right now of what you've accomplished this season and in your careers? Devontae, you want to start with that one? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> for me, it was just an honor. Uh, throughout the whole year, just be able to play with a group of guys that's so talented, um, especially with a, a great coaching staff, you know, with Coach Juwan Howard and the rest of the guys did a great job. Um, this is an experience I'll never forget. I mean, obviously, you know, we didn't get the outcome we wanted, but me, I'm just, you know, blessed to be in the position I am today. Um, through, through my three years at Coastal, I never made March Madness, and my first one, my first run, I made it Sweet 16. So um, it was just an amazing experience for me. and. Um, I don't know what uh, the future holds, but you know I'm just grateful that I'm in a position with these guys. <clears throat> yeah, um, looking back on the season, uh, starting with you know really high expectations on the season, and then you know when the season happened, you know we kind of didn't start the way we wanted to. But you know when I look back on the season, just probably just how proud of you know my guys and how you know we felt like fought through adversity. We could have easily just gave up on the season halfway when. You know, we were like four and four in the Big Ten, under 500. But I mean, we just we fought as hard as we could, and you know, to be able to make the Sweet 16 and be one of the last, you know, 16 teams standing, obviously didn't reach, you know, our ultimate goal. But I'm just proud of how we fought back and battled through adversity. Michael Cohen with the Detroit Free Press. Uh, Eli, you know, can you kind of describe a little bit what this year was like for you off the court in terms of the role you played with the young guys and, and just kind of what was on your plate away from what people see in 40 minutes every night on the court? I mean, we had a, we had a young young group that always uh, wanted to learn. So uh, it was awesome that, to be able to work with Frankie and Kobe. Um, they're, they're one of the like, most, like, Willing to get in the gym, um, like high basketball IQ. Um, they asked, they asked me and Devonte just like, how do you, how do you do certain things? So um, just being able to teach them. I mean, sitting in the locker room, um, Isaiah Barnes came up to me and said, I just appreciate you for everything that you did um, this season. So um, just seeing that really meant a lot um, that I have an impact on the the younger freshmen and sophomores. All right, I'm going to toss it over to Zoom, Ann. Our next question comes from Steve Kornacki. Steve, please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Yeah, this is for Jawan. Jawan, could you touch on what your two senior guards have meant to you in every way this season? Oh, they've been great all year. Uh, I thought, you know, having two seniors in your backcourt, uh, being two leaders, that can help lead our team, you know, they were stars throughout the year. Um, you know, when you have a young team, 10 underclassmen, you know, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. But you know you're going to get some guys that really love basketball, and you're going to try to develop them, uh, pour into their development, um, and just try to give as much as possible. So we use the word serving. And so, like, our senior guards were some of the best leaders uh, that you can find. And, you know, looking at, you know, starting with DJ, you know, this was only one year with him, but DJ has, you know, accepted his role, um, learned you know, a lot from this, this team and how the Michigan culture, everything that I, t- I sold him on when I recruited him, um, being honest, but then also he, he saw how it, you know, it all developed. And then, you know, Eli, who I've coached for three years, um, he is rock solid as they come. Uh, one of the 
my favorite guy is the coach, but I've had so many favorites, so it's, you know, typically you usually don't have a favorite, but, you know, this young man is, um, has been special, not only for the players, but also for the staff, because he's an extension of the staff, and he does an amazing job on the floor, not just competing, but also leading. Um, I've always said this before, and I say it in front of him. You know, if you ever want to coach, if I'm still coaching, you have a job with me, young fella. Um, that's how much I trust him. And uh, that's how much he's shown how smart he is uh, in knowing the game inside and outside. I don't know if many of you know this or not, but he taught himself how to golf, and he's one of the best golfers there is. So you see him on the court playing well, but he's also a great golfer. It, it shows you how his mind is wired. But overall, I mean, they, they were you know, special throughout the year, and DJ with his health, He's battled and battled. He's one of the toughest guys that ever been around. All right. Thank you, Michigan. Appreciate your time. And thank you. Thanks for having us. Go blue. Go blue.